Show Praise Casino Pre Show Navigator. It's December 7th, 2021. Who the fuck let it be December? Hello. It's the end of the year, but we're here for you. No fear. And that's a clothing, that's a clothing company. Hello, everybody. Let's uh let's let's throw you straight into the great room. I got some stuff I gotta get set up here, and I believe we've got some guests in there. So uh let's get connected. Out. That's straight Let's say, up. Green room, I hello, can you hear me? Three hours of Bob Dole dick jokes today. Fantastic. Uh, I, uh, uh, he was a spokesperson hey Bryce, for Viagra. Just Viagra. Yeah. Hello, hi, everybody. Bryce, hi. Hi. Uh, take it away. Uh, oh, Bryce, we can't, we can't hear you. If, 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 if you think that we can hear you, we cannot hear you. You might have to turn up the volume. Turn up this this no, 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 because we heard the bloop. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, we, we just did. didn't hear he the says, ah! yeah. He's going to be saying stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah Bryce is going to come like, in here. He's rolling over now. Bob Dole. So Bob Dole Bob Dole Bob Dole dead at 98. So you guys think he's really dead, huh? <laughs> well, that's why they wrote that song. I mean, his his uh, comedy career is gone. So okay, all right. I want you to think of a rock and roll song that was clearly written about Bob Dole. Okay, I'm gonna Bob go. Ram? No, I don't know. It's different for all Bob of us. Dole, Bob Dole. <laughs> okay, all right. That's yours. All right, we hear you now. Bob Dole. Cool. Great. Have a good drink. There you are. Uh, see, mine is. Bob Dole. Ah, 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 that's that's ah, such Bob bullshit. Dole. That's gonna be any two word thing. I mean, apparently. Uh, okay, what's yours? Denise, that's not even one. I did it better than you. It just has to be two syllables. That doesn't even have to be two words. Work for the Hills would be good for Bob Dole. I just feel like he could really, like, if he'd done karaoke, like, he, he jams it on his one arm and, like, has to, like, lean over. Hold my pencil as he goes. By the way, do you know how he got that? That fucked up arm? World yeah. War II? World, World War II charging a Nazi Fisting position. Hitler. Had a, a shrapnel hit him. He recovered for three fucking years and only held the pen so it wouldn't be awkward when people tried to, try to, to shake, shake his hand. Uh, like, sorry, I got a pencil. Like, yeah, he's just holding holding the pencil. Uh, the, um, mm, should have held a Bowie knife. That it really. <laughs> yeah, and that it showed people. And, and so I, I had always, I had always, can, I had always can, forgotten can this. Can I ask a totally unrelated general question about Bob Dole? Yeah. Uh, no, not at all. Not about, about Bob, Bob Dole. Dole. I only prep for Bob Dole stuff. Sorry. I, yeah. I, I Me only too. Ask, Libby's the answer to the next question. <laughs> I only want to ask in the abstract and in general, uh, what is our public facing stance on inappropriate jokes, like woefully inappropriate jokes? Like in this room or in society? Well, I mean, we are on the air right now mm -hmm. broadcasting to potentially millions of people. Mm -hmm. Can you text me the topic and I'll tell you? Um, yeah. You know what? Uh, Cause look, Ladies and you, gentlemen, you, I'd you like to meet my friend Joe Diamond. Joe Diamond. Joe Diamond. Yeah. Sorry, I was listening to uh, a thing on Lenny Bruce, so I'm kind of ready for inappropriate jokes. I'm I'm here for it. So here's here's the deal: you can make inappropriate jokes about certain classes without sure. without a nation, Bob Dole. right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Bob Dole being old Definitely. and white and yeah. powerful. Sure. Uh, uh, you can say the worst shit about yeah. Bob sure. Dole as, as long and as it's punching up. Shit, but I even then, punching up to a yeah. dead person. Dead well, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, oxygen. fair enough. A, a, a more, a more famous them. dead person than all of us. I do believe what it's do more what called do you kicking them while they're I down. That so, yeah. yeah. So or Brian, Brian, a, Brian has not. You can't kick them. They're six feet under. Yeah, that's true. Because part of part of the equation is. If you if you're gonna go offensive, it has to be funny. And the more offensive yes. it is, the more funny it is. Yes. So if it's if it's schlocky, it won't work. But if it's very funny, then it will work. Yes. Uh, well, I mean, luckily I never wrote nor heard wow. any kind of joke. Wow. <laughs> you see? You bring it up. Let's well, see it. no, 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 no. You're gonna have to be the the observer. Uh, uh, do you want to see the punch? Brian yeah. Brian didn't just text a topic. He sent oh, no. he sent no. a joke and a punchline. Uh, so, <laughs> so I never I never I did not write it. Uh, I will not say it. Uh, you won't say it. No. 
Oh. You sure? I'll, asking in the abstract, what are it? I'll, I'll tell my most <laughs> offensive joke, no, and we'll yeah, see how, we how it compares. No, 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 we don't, we'll we see don't. how it compares. This is not. This is not. <laughs> this is who not can blow up their career fast yeah. no, enough? No, no, like, it's, it's, it's fine. Not a it's fine. Dirty word it's fine. It's fine. Sorry, no. I do, I do there, there's no dirty words here either. It doesn't make it okay. That's all I need. I thought it was funny. No, I would think. I mean, Bob Bob Dole has a a, a crazy comedic legacy. Yes. Like, yeah, like he was he was very very funny. Yeah, he wrote yeah. a book called Great American. No, it was a great political wit. Political wit, right? Which I think was him aggregating other people's stuff, but right. all the same, he was funny. He had a good sense of humor. Same. He was good about Saturday Night Live. So I watched this thing. He was on Letterman right after he lost in '96. Yeah, and this ah. is in the episode uh, that'll okay. come out tomorrow. But uh, he's his jokes are like. Killer tweet. Like, no. uh, he, like <laughs> Letterman asked him, like, like, so, like, what happens when you have to call President Clinton in 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 the morning or uh, after you've lost? And he's like, well, like, I did call, collect. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, uh, and when he's asked, like, oh, oh like, uh, I don't know, it's really, really funny. He, uh, he, he that, was bringing when they were like, why'd you get into politics? He'd always like be like, well, there's no heavy lifting and it's air conditioned. Like, yeah. it was always like what he'd begin with. Yeah. Uh, but what I always forget is that uh, so in 2001, Britney Spears has the big Pepsi commercial. That's the biggest commercial that's of the Super right. Bowl. Oh, that's and right. Ends and so the whole joke is everybody's watching Britney Spears. Men, women, young, old, they're all transfixed with the muse of the moment shaking her shit yes. in front of Pepsi trucks. Uh, and it ends with Bob Dole and a dog, and the dog barks and he's like, Easy boy. <laughs> yeah. and, so the, and I looked it up 30 seconds in that Super Bowl is $2.2 million. So two, four and a half million dollars that ends the closer. Is Bob Dole has boners? Is it, yeah. well, because well, of Viagra? Specifically, is because a specific, of the Viagra. It's a coded, nested joke to yeah. the fact that he was a Vi Viagra spokesman. Yep. Which, by the way, uh, he didn't have Alzheimer's, can, did he? Can, can I, so can I say, like, <laughs> here we go, I, right? Hard dicks, yeah. Strong brains. <laughs> <laughs> hard dicks, hard I, things. So, That's so how it goes. When, when I was working for a network and I had a show, Albert a, a, a far more a far more successful show. They offered to give the guy advertising. They're like, like uh, Viagra wants you to advertise with him. He's like, no, absolutely not. I don't want my face. To, and I like crept over and was like, I'll sell boner pills. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'll I look like a guy that needs boner pills. I might as well <laughs> like, like hijack that and use it. For I was like, I aspire to eventually sell boner pills. I mean, it's like, look. We could probably fucking... be selling boner pills on this podcast tomorrow you know what? I'll if give, we want I'll give you this one for free, Viagra. Hard dicks, big tits, America number one. <laughs> Bob Dole loved you, and I love you too. You I mean, stop Alzheimer's in its tracks. <laughs> no, no offense. Hard on. Applied, applied directly seen. to no, the head. No offense. <laughs> hard on. Hard on. <laughs> no offense, Brian. <laughs> No offense. No offense. I'm not offended. I'm but fucking I would hard. Say, I would I'm say rigid. Uh, I would I'm say messing. you'd make a better hymns spokesman than a Viagra no. spoke spokesman. No, no, he, no he's, yeah, he's a Roman man. Yeah, no, he's a Roman. Okay. Yeah. yeah, best on succession. Yeah. Best for boners. Romulus. Best for your I was hair. close, wasn't I? I was close. So here's what I forgot about the 2001 Super Bowl. They then followed it up. So randomly in the middle of the Super Bowl, there was another ad. That was made to look like a Viagra ad with Bob Dole walking on a peaceful beach and Bob Dole saying like, like, well, like I've got a, I've got a secret that's made me feel young again. Uh, 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 and he's it's doing things. No, I and, vote and, Republican. And he's like, he's like, 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 well, like, like my secret is my little blue friend. Pepsi Cola. <laughs> oh, man. And they did? They did. Oh, yeah. That's so good. Oh, he backflip, doesn't and then he does yeah. a backflip on the beach <laughs> and he's like, I feel young again. And that's... then a bunch of young hotties are like playing with his dog. Okay, I don't know if I've been left behind. Is that is this still real? We're describing real. a real no, thing. No, for real. For real. There there like 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 that was his his post statesman stretch was selling like motor pills and then making jokes and then about making jokes about how funny it was that yeah. he has a hard dick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what a Chad! <laughs> <laughs> what a, what an amazing human! His entire last act was like, "My dick is so hard." Isn't that funny? You know, okay, okay. I'm mean, just. Because I think he'd find this funny. I think he'd find this funny. Yes, yes I be, find it very funny. It's me, the ghost of Bob Dole. Great. I've got a hard dick and a sharp mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a hundred years old, two you years take it away. from now. Take it away. <laughs> no, I'm approving of your joke. Let's hear your joke. Okay, good. Okay, good. <laughs> 
shit. No, nope, I'm done. Take it. Take it. I'll, just, I'll just have a Yours no. is funnier. God damn it. Oh, Yours my God. Free, feel is free. It's an open casket by necessity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Open Couldn't casket with a kickstand. <laughs> That's right. Couldn't close the casket. Oh, shit. The only deal I couldn't close in death was being the sidekick to Andrew Heaton. <laughs> Uh, All right. what, was, what were you going to say? Well, actually, I think that Fearless Freep had a far better comment than I had. But I, I think a, a, a fitting tribute to Bob Dole would be that, like, when you walk by his casket, you hear a thump. <laughs> <laughs> Still pumping. Still pumping. So, uh, I... I uh, in all seriousness, Bob Dole was the first uh, presidential candidate that I understood how much more we like presidential candidates after they they're not at risk of winning. Yeah, yeah. like like uh, 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 so Bob Dole was first, and then uh, uh, Jimmy Al Carter Gore. becomes increasingly cuddly. <laughs> yes, exactly, and then even George W. Bush, and you know, yeah. and so on. Yeah, McCain was pretty cuddly yeah. for a while. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, everybody. Uh, well, yeah, yeah. the world I mean, loves losers Ma uh, 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 and boners. Uh, and uh, McCain, sharp McCain minds went, don't have Alzheimer's. McCain went into a valley thing because he yes. was beloved. Yes, and then as soon as he was a threat. He was despised. Yeah. Yeah. And, the then he, thing, and then he came back. Didn't the same thing happen to McCain, though, where McCain was like the That's what we were talking about. Oh, I thought you were yeah. talking about Dole. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, McCain, exactly. Because McCain yeah. was like, why can't more people be like McCain? And then he got the, the nomination, and they're like, fuck you! <laughs> yeah. Fuck you! Get away! He's a Nazi. Everybody rally. Yeah. Everybody rally. <laughs> uh, no, yeah. That's a... Uh, 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 yeah, Bob Dole. And, and he was Chris for the mill, man. Like, uh, he was, at that time, hilariously... Way too old to be president at 73. Also, the oldest possible person that, oh, right. oh my God, he's he so fell old. off a stage. He's so old. He he used the, uh, he called the LA Dodgers the Brooklyn Dodgers, despite the fact that they had moved 38 years prior. Now, yeah. it, it is, Way it is, too I, old. I have done that. <laughs> <laughs> like last week. For, yeah. 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 Last week. Uh, uh, but yeah, no. And then, uh, uh, you know, then we go on to elect the 76 and 79 year old president. It, it, so, if so he was—he was a fucking—he was a young kid compared. Yeah. yeah. If, if you add up the Speaker of the House, Majority Floor Leader, Minority Floor Leader, President, but it's like five hundred years collectively yeah. between. Yeah. Like you add them all together, it's almost as long as my dick. <laughs> it's me, the ghost of Bob Dole. I like that your version of Bob Dole is Andrew Dice Clay. Like, <laughs> oh, I'm Bob Dole. Oh. <laughs> no, nobody can disapprove of me. I was a war hero. <laughs> he puts his arm around his head and it's a pen and yeah, says yeah. a cigarette. <laughs> we should be illegal. <laughs> I can't shake hands, but I can do this. Uh, yeah, okay, so there we go. R.I.P. Bob Dole, one of the great American All statesmen. Right. Uh, uh, his dick was really hard and that shit was I, really I, funny. I, you know what? I oh, I should find this. I went as him as Halloween one year. I'll see if really? I can find that. You can make it like whenever I'm on your show, you can make that Just artwork. the artwork of yeah. you as Bob Dole? Yeah. It's very dickery, different. It's dickery very... dole. My dick is mighty swole. <laughs> I took a blue pill. I'm feeling mighty ill. I think I might. Uh, no, my, 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 my pants I do fill. Yeah, my pants I take I a do blue fill. fill. My pants I do fill. <laughs> and I'll call my friend Dr. Phil. <laughs> and Libby is something and something. Yeah. Something, something pole. It's, oh, yeah. yeah. yeah, 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 something, yeah. Something, yeah. Something, something pole. Smoking my Libby And Libby, and yeah. then yeah. Libby goes Smoking up pole. the flag pole. Yeah. Oh! Yeah, that's fucked up. Yeah. This is all okay. fucked up. That's uh, do we, we find can, it funny? Can probably. We, can we talk about the complicated history that Bob Dole had with his controversial comments that he was making all the time? No. I just want to throw all the yeah, blame. Let's on. just get him out there. <laughs> just shovel all that. What did he say? The because uh, I don't remember that. <laughs> 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 yeah, oh, oh. That, oh, that well known he's, that he's, well known joke that Bob Dole used yes. to tell about himself. He said. He said. Uh, he said. I love hot weather all the time. Wearing flannel is oh, sublime. Are we going to do this oh, on yeah, the, sorry. Do uh, this I, in the I, first I segment? I'm from the wrong segment. No, no. <laughs> you, oh, we can do it now and just do it again on the show. I mean, look, I, I, anything to get the attention off of me right now. <laughs> <laughs> We're so all the guy who's it. yelling is Bob right, Dole's like, dick. What's happening? <laughs> I, 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 I hand I, the mic over to Joe Diamond. <laughs> oh, sorry. I just, I just, the transcended. What happened? <laughs> Sometimes I was in another body for a minute there. Uh, Heaton, you, uh, uh, you're here in Austin now. Uh huh. Uh, uh, how are you acclimating? Uh, I love it here. It's great. There's, there's fun stuff to do all the time. 
Um, like I sent you guys a recording of me at a German Christmas concert yeah. on Sunday. Yeah. Uh, they let me sing at the end. I got to sing. Okay Can I just say you are the fucking busiest person I've ever met in my entire life. And like and whenever, whenever I, 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 cause I see you often. Yeah. Like there is, there is a, a, a small cadre of people that I see on a regular basis. You are among them. Mm -hmm. And every time I see you, you've got like 14 different, very unique things that have happened since the last time. Yeah. I, I, I saw you, including going to a German American Yeah, and I and I the only reason society I, the only reason singing I, O Tannenbaum. The only reason I didn't go from that to a UFO experience or society meeting is I couldn't find the pizza restaurant. But that was gonna be <laughs> boy, that's that was gonna be the thing that I did that evening. So by the way, that knife cuts both ways because on the one hand, both of us really enjoy seeing your itinerary constantly being updated, like, well now I'm now I'm now I'm now I'm but then it's like, hey, come on over. And it's like, yes, I'll watch one. One episode. Okay, that was fun. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, there's a pug convention. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I don't have a pug, but I love conventions. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, I'm a, uh, a panelist on a quinceanera contest, <laughs> and I'll see you later. Who's the best 15? Well, that's that's the, the, the hello, question. who's this? Yes, I accept the gig. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 no, that, like, but Austin's great for that, because Austin, there's just stuff happening constantly. There's always stuff happening here. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I I think the, they're starting to feel guilty. They're like, really? There is? Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, no, no, I, no, I, 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 I do not have heat and energy. Monday yeah. nights, every single Monday night, there's a bluegrass concert at yep. Radio, Radio, Radio Coffee. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. Tuesday nights, yep. there's thinkers and drinkers, although I've only been able to go to one, but that's just bullshitting while drinking. Which Were you is drinking right or thinking? <laughs> both. Both simultaneously. Mm. Yes. Uh, and then uh, I, don't, I don't have a regular Wednesday night activity. And I don't know. I'm filling it out. But there's, there's plenty of stuff to do. Like, I'm not, I've not been bored yet. Oh, shit. By the way, hit me up at that bluegrass thing, because that, yeah. that's not oh, far yeah. from my house. Yeah, great. Yeah. Cool. So, I'd love yeah. that. Quick question. What has been the... Uh, I, I, I hesitate to ever say biggest or most or whatever, mm -hmm. but, but but give me a top five surprise since you moved to Austin. Since I moved here, in terms of surprise... Just a pretty good surprise. Um, so... so the, well, I'll tell you about temperature in a minute, which has freaked me out. We no, have, save it yeah. for We've the got, show. That's, got that's show. what, look at them, they're salivating. They're like, yeah. oh, we want no, temp, no, talk. No, no. Uh, temp talk. You, you, you know Weather, what, had, what else? I, I hesitate to get political on a non-political show. I'll keep it fairly broad. But I, I went to a Thinkers and Drinkers event, and uh, and I was like, all right, Heaton, keep your shit together. It's a new town. Nobody knows what, that you're a deviant. You're like, super just, high. Just say, just say I'm an independent. <laughs> no one will know. Uh, and then the topic was Liberty. Now, for anybody who doesn't know, I, I frequently am, am a contributor on Reason, which is a libertarian outfit. Okay? Sure. Which you're Don't. super proud about, and you never worry that we'll come to bite you in the butt. You get rejected by 972 <laughs> consecutive <laughs> women to hope you die alone, <laughs> swinging from a news. That's why you don't date in Congress. And, oh, you start to change your. <laughs> uh, but no, but I but I went there and like like it, it like within about 20 minutes, I was like, "Am I? I'm the moderate here." I did not see that coming. I did not like. I thought I was going to have to like. Like, so far, no, that's been a cool thing about it. I, I think that Austin is, by virtue of the fact that it is a big transient population and tons of people have friends or family to disagree with, I'm finding it to be a very, uh, a much more pluralistic, tolerant, open-minded political climate than I'd anticipated. I thought by virtue of being a bright blue dot, it was going to be a little bit more like, keep your head down for me, and that's not been the case. Although, you, true or false, are scarred by the fact that you were working at a Murdoch property after <laughs> Trump got elected. Yes, that true. Yes, that's yeah. yeah. Although, <laughs> like, although I wasn't there for very long because I I left right after he uh, after he got sworn in. I didn't want to be there anymore. So, sure. So I wasn't really and 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 that, and, 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 and that didn't buy you much. <laughs> no, <laughs> being no. your last big uh, yeah. uh, resume item. There's there's many missteps <laughs> Mr. Heaton has made romantically <laughs> in career. -wise. No, 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 no. That is not what you did. That is just the fact that you happened into a world that was inhospitable uh, was, to Heaton. That was okay. So like, all right, let's let's get into this. Let's right, fucking uh, do but, it before we do. Yeah. Uh, within the last week, I read something or other that was talking about how Washington, D.C. was unique in that everybody accepts everybody being from different tribes because you have to work across the aisle on everything. Uh, I didn't realize how real that a thing was. And and all of a sudden, your reticence to moving into a red state with a blue city uh, was like, well, it seems like I'll be squeezed out with my weird alien beliefs. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, all of a sudden, I was like, oh, now I understand your attraction to Washington, yeah, D.C. No, to begin with. So, yeah, the benefit to D.C. Um, is it, it is a, a career hindrance if you can't make friends with people you disagree with in D.C. Right. That is literally contravening your – unless you are in a shrill activacy uh, – Act, 
activacy? What's sure. Advocacy? Advocacy. A advocacy yeah. organization. I like the other where one. Where that's all you do. <laughs> Like if, if you're if you're actually working in politics, particularly in the legislative branch, which is where I worked, or you're uh, a lobbyist, which is where you go after you've worked in the legislative branch, mm -hmm. you need to be able to make friends. And probably you do make friends. I was on a, a softball league with all, all number of degenerates, and we get drunk and make out. And really, politics was secondary to that. And uh, no, so DC is good about that. Um, the the other good thing about DC is uh, you can't say overtly stupid crap. Like if we're at a um, we're at a bar, and I'm like, can you imagine if Puerto Rico became American, like somebody would be like, hey, dipshit, it became American in 1897 after the Adams Otis Treaty. Pull your head out of your ass. Yeah. <laughs> like that, like, and I like that. Like, but the downside is also an it's, entire it's, city it, of, it, of but, but mainly they're Florida. saying it, it in it the same way. It is all AP American history, kids. <laughs> right. Yes. Everybody, no, no, old and young. It's all grown up student council presidents. That's so it. So if you want to live in a town entirely of student council presidents, it's great. I like visiting a town of student council. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Because I find it to be kind of monoculture, yeah. So, and, and in the interim, so so it was D.C., then uh, uh, New York, which is fairly yeah. heterogeneous, and then... Yeah. Uh, 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 and is then, there a very small town uh, east of New Jersey? For those of you who don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. But, but, but then you go to the bluest city in the bluest state, and then you go to a fairly red city in a red state, and, in, and, and then... Uh, the, I don't know who convinced you to move to Austin, but I'm very thankful, and they're very intelligent. <laughs> yep. Whoever yeah, yeah, those yeah, two yeah, people yeah. And are. And hats, hats off to the Badger Committee. Yeah. <laughs> the Badger Committee the Badger convinces committee. you to move to Austin. Mm -hmm. uh, then, but the thing is, is as long as the Badger Committee is uh, badgering, they don't have to accept responsibility for nothing. <laughs> it's only after one of the Badger Committee <laughs> right. helps you move into your apartment <laughs> that he turns to the other member and says, uh, so... <laughs> no, we're like we're like the guys who sign you up for the army at the mini mall. <laughs> like once your name's on the paper, we're out. we get paid. Like, <laughs> you're already in the nah, system. You probably won't get drafted. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. You just, you just lift sandbags twice. Oh shit, Iraq. Well, yeah. anyway, I well, got like, like, sure. like, well, fuck me, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, have a good time. Looks to me like I got twice a quota now. I'll see ya. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, no, you had a very. I don't think this is on the the agenda for the pre-show, Bryce. Please stop me if it, if it is. But uh, you had a, a a a very fun first date situation. Yeah, I did. Uh, that um, so, uh, girl I've not met yet lives in North Austin. I live in South Austin. Mm -hmm. and it's not that far. And I, it's, it's never going to happen. It's nice. Just, it's just call it off right now. But, but I want, here's what I'll do. I'll pick a midpoint. That yeah. seems like a general thing to do. Yeah. And I had, when I had an abortive attempt to live here two years ago, I'd made a, a whole map of, yeah. of restaurants and bars to check out. And I was like, well, here's a place. This is about midpoint. It's a storied, colorful dive bar. Uh, and it, uh, old Austin, all this stuff. And, I, and she's like, oh, I've heard of that. We should go there. I went, great, great, great. Now, I should have called to see if they'd been shut down in the last two years during the pandemic, mm. but I didn't. So, from her perspective, she walks up at dusk and there's an abandoned building <laughs> with broken windows, bats, <laughs> daggers, charts of glass, <laughs> somebody chanting Latin. Uh, <laughs> and it's just like, had to call me and be like, are you luring me to this abandoned location to murder me? And I was like, no, I don't even know you. I wouldn't kill you yet. You know, like, I, have, I have to <laughs> come up with the This gentleman I'm not killing just on Tinder bios. <laughs> like, like, I'm going to have to at least get that. physical eyes on this. Come on. And Everybody so, lies in and, those and, pictures. And, and she she went, uh, okay, like, like we, we, we met, then we went to some other place, and she didn't like that. I was like, okay. I was like, well, we'll go to this other location. And she went, uh, all so right. So anyway, I killed her, her and I ditched her at that <laughs> oh, I killed her. place. Anyway, I, if you walk in, it's just it by the dam. Uh, and then, yeah, then the next place I took her to was closed just randomly. Like it had a, like a note on the door. It's like, we're closed. And then I was like, all right, look, when, when life gives you lemons, you take a big ass bite out of that lemon and you say, what the fuck now, life? And that's yeah. what we're doing. And we went, we went somewhere else. It worked, it worked okay. But it took 45 minutes of... Bouncing around like a ping pong ball be behind abandoned and closed locations. So, what was the first closed location? That a was Denny's, deep ironically. Was, I think it's called like Dive Boat or Deep Boat or Dry, dry Boat was the name of it. Oh, dry boat. I mean, it literally closed just a month ago. Oh, well, okay. See, that makes me feel better because I actually checked their Facebook. Yeah, the, the boat, do boat yeah. dock or well, it dry got dock. Super fucking abandoned in that interview. Yeah, month. that's it. They should call it Murder Bar. Oh, it very much looks like a there's a story right about that place that we can talk about not here, but it's uh, no, I mean, it's great. It's fantastic. Can we, why there's, don't we tell it here? Okay, we'll yeah. tell it right here. So there was this old lady that was the bartender of the place uh -huh. for decades. Right. 
the meanest bartender in Austin and Central Texas. She was basically what would happen because it's a two-story thing, and she didn't want to go upstairs. She goes, I'm going to serve you, and you bring your shit back downstairs. And if people didn't, she would tear them a new asshole. So, so she didn't. Uh, so, if you did not bring your glasses, bring back down, bring your shit back down, she would tear you up. And she would remember what everybody yep. had. Oh man, it was awesome. So, like, like the <laughs> the arch librarian of booze. Yes, in, in Texas. Okay. Just nice. not put the Professor up with Snape it. of booze. Nice. Yes. Nice. I, I like, see, Mr. Potter, you failed again to bring your glass back down. This should be a running, especially this is a town that should have this, like like a running list of the character bartenders. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I, I, I need an app of like just like an updating live map of when the character bartenders are on staff. Yes. Like, if I'm just randomly fucking around and it's like, eh, I got an hour to kill. Let me find, like, oh, this is the... The French guy with the eye patch, like, uh, uh, like <laughs> I want, I want to go to that guy. Like, yeah. he's on shift right now. I want to go get a drink there. <laughs> like, like the mean old lady who always tells you to bring your glasses back down. I want to yep. do that. So, did she get arrested? Is that why they went under? What happened? No, she died. Okay, <laughs> there, there you go. She died. So it's haunted. That's so why. So that's why. The amazing thing about that place was the last time that I went. With uh, EK, <laughs> we walk up to the door, and as we're walking up, the the the, uh, the screen door flies open, and a rabbit runs out and runs into the bushes, and a dog comes right behind and goes to the bushes, and we're like, "What is happening?" And then about a minute later, a guy comes out, and he's like, "Did did did their friends?" And I was like, "Where's?" The-? There was a rabbit that just came. Oh, they're just friends. I also <laughs> love a guy who. When his pet rabbit and dog escape, rather than be like, hi, my name's Bob, just announces, they're friends. Yeah, they're friends, because we were like... Which I guess makes sense, because you're wondering that, right? You're not, you're not thinking about parking then. You're, not, no. you're like, what the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's with their fucking rabbit? They're friends. Nice. They're friends. Nice. <laughs> just like, like Jesus talked about in Revelations, when the beagle and the rabbit shall lay down. Yes, together. but... Mm-hmm. The trumpeting out of the horns. I mean, now they're just playing chase, which seems weird to me, but, you know... Yeah. As but they're as, friends. As long as they bang, they're friends. The end, but they're friends. Yeah, okay, they, they bang. They yeah. banged in the end. <laughs> did Did we ever get to the biggest surprise of Austin, or a big surprise of Austin? I, I guess you mentioned uh, the political uh, yeah, being well, I sanguine. Mean, like, so, so in my case, I've I've hung out here quite a lot before moving here, right? Mm-hmm. And I kind of tried to live here a couple times. So it's not like it's alien to me. I feel more like I have come out of a coma because I've been here two years ago for six months, and then like two years before that for six months, right? So I'm kind of, I'll go to places and be like, I've been here before. And I'll like feel the guy's face, which is yeah. not what you yeah, And he's so like, going, That's the, this is a blind thing. What are you doing? And I'm like, no, 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 I have amnesia. It's fine. I'm allowed to touch your face. <laughs> Still so that's kind of how I feel. Like, don't worry. I'm boosted. Blindness. <laughs> it's okay. uh, we're friends. I don't. I don't want to dox you accidentally, but uh, you have a pretty sweet. But pad. your social security you number is <laughs> five. Are you still enjoying your oh, yeah, no, pretty well, sweet okay. place? Y- yes, with one tiny caveat. Um, th- it's a duplex. It's v- it's a very nice location in town. I, I love the apartment. Or the the duplex itself. They are actively doing construction on it next door. I don't know what it is, but the guy there, like, th- it's not a big deal. It'll be they done. go native so fast. It'll be <laughs> down, then you just hear him go. <laughs> he's, he's about to complain about the Californians I, next. I, I wake up every day, seven o'clock a.m. on the dot. See it balls. There's a guy named Bobby, <laughs> who's a nice dude. I've talked to him. He's a nice dude, but every day, and I honest, I think there might be some subconscious part of him that wants to wake me up because he will come in seven o'clock and bang shit next to where my head is, like on the board, and then just not bang anything I mean, for two and a half these hours. these women have names. It's Why are you... <laughs> you're right. Wow. You're right, you're right. <laughs> or like, like he yelled at his dog, but it was at 7 a.m. today, and I was like, could you... <sighs> All right. But that's Joe, a temporary phenomenon, right? Mm-hmm. That'll go away. Mm-hmm. Joe Diamond, uh, what is it going to take for you to finally move to Austin? Uh, a suitcase full of money. Where are you located now? Uh, I am uh, right on the uh, – I'm right in between Chicago and Milwaukee on the Wisconsin-Illinois border. Okay. That's my way of getting around saying I live next to Kenosha, Wisconsin. Uh, wait, wait. Kenosha proper or greater yeah. Kenosha? Greater Kenosha. Yeah. Pleasant, okay. All right. Pleasant Prairie. Yeah. Um, do you cross so, state lines? <laughs> I do. I do. But uh, but everyone would be like, where's that? Until 18 months ago. Yeah. Then and it then, became very popular. And then, yeah. and then two weeks ago. And yeah. then now. So and then, now – 
it's oh I'm, I live right off the highway between Chicago I think, and I think, Milwaukee. I think you're ready to be <laughs> done with that though. No, and I think you're, oh, okay. You're, okay, you're, okay you're, let me back up. Let me back you're, up. You're, you're, I have you're, my you're, own. You're settling into another two decades of no one giving a fuck about Kenosha. Fair enough, but I but I work in the Chicagoland area, and I mm. work at a arts park, which is. A haunted mansion used to belong to one of the Ringling Brothers' wives. It's pretty cool. It's very cool. I have my own space there uh, that seats 13 people, and I 14 do. 14 ghosts. And 14 ghosts. <laughs> 13 humans and 14 ghosts. At the same uh, time? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's spacious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the this and yeah, the I've been doing that show. for the last couple of years. And like, that's the majority of my income. Like, I'm in town for a, a corporate event, which I did earlier today. Everything, like most performers, magicians, mentalists in my age bracket, career bracket, and you and I have talked about this, like have to just constantly hustle for that. Mm. But I've made a pretty solid, because like the rent, for, I won't say on air, but the rent for my studio is on Haunted Mansion. All right, air. it's 300 a month. Wow. Fine. So yeah, so literally, damn, I'm printing wait, wait, money. Are you like? I, I mean, I'm fuck, dude. Printing Hi, I'm Bob Dole. <laughs> I don't need Viagra anymore. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I just think is, is, of is what it, is it diamond like cheap and greater <laughs> Joe Diamond's rent in landlord. This or is what? in the Crystal Lake area, so this is in yeah. Illinois. Is I was gonna, yeah. I, I was, I was gonna say if it was in Kenosha, I'd shoot a mentally handicapped person for that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wow! Wow! And he hasn't um, been reading the news. Well, well, they, they <laughs> hey, 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 they, they were from Illinois, uh, but anyway, uh, so yeah, so it's in Crystal Lake, Too Illinois, soon. and yeah, so the rent is nothing, Pretty and good. I get and is to, that standard there. Or do you have a special deal? So it's so they they have different size studio spaces. So let me back up a little bit. Quick history lesson: the house was built in the 1860s. Then in 1922, Lou Ringling purchased it after her husband Al passed away, and she built all these like extra studio spaces to be used for. And they have shared bathrooms between them, and she, you know, uh, showers on every every floor. Like it was like. If you ever come there, you'll be like, oh, yeah, a show business person made this for circus folk to hang out when they weren't touring. Like, totally. Everyone's like, why'd she build it? They're like, oh, my school, maybe to rent it out. And it's like, no, this was for circus folk. Uh, and the Arnie Mansion. So, so all those, basically. Getting increasingly uncomfortable with this conversation. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so the, car, for the, the carny aspect or the. I, mean, just, I, mean, I would just say, I, I don't want to contemplate what everyone's going to think of this place long after I've departed this earth. Like, Bob, when I'm in oh. the arms of Bob Dole. <laughs> yes, yes. Fair <laughs> enough. Sweet Fair arms. enough. Yeah, exactly. What? What? Uh, Wait a minute, you? Bob. Those no. are your arms, right? <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. So, Bob Dole starts clapping. He's like, easy boy. I mean, okay. Hustler let magazine. Me, let me say, <laughs> so this guy buy every room. Yeah, yeah, Hustler exactly. Magazine. I peeled the wall back and it's just Hustler magazine. Yeah. Yeah. So, duplicates so yeah, too. so all these, so there's all these like random studio spaces now and they rent it out as an arts park. There's painters, musicians, woman who does massage therapy, uh, um, all sorts of kooky people. There's a pastor there who uses it as office space. Are they and, right next to each other? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. Are they the dating? Yeah. <laughs> you know, Are I'm not going to talk. I'm not going to talk about my artist neighbors <laughs> out of uh, out of school. Uh, but yeah, so. I've been doing shows there for the last no, few just years. Just raw dogging. Yeah, just raw. No dogging. love yeah, involved. No, no, no love. No, no eye love. We're just fucking. Our mess. <laughs> yes. No. Yeah, we're strictly physical. Yeah. So meth carnal. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Shots fired. Methodism. Bop, bop, bop. Lutheranism all the way. Yeah. Uh, Technically, right, so follow-up questions not yeah. involving your pastor. <laughs> okay, all right. No, it's not. It's not my pastor. It's not my fucking pastor. Yeah, yeah. According to the law my, of Kenosha, with any pastor within thirty feet, your pastor. It's your pastor. Oh, I went to twelve years of Baptist school. We can talk about my pastor. <laughs> Great. Never mind. I don't okay. okay. Do you live in your shop? No, no, no. So I, I grew up in that area. Is that like asking the TV man if you do you live in the tiny box? I'm just trying to figure out how the three hundred thing works. If it's no, like, no, maybe it's, he lives under a desk. No, no, yeah. I, I live in an apartment with my wife. Prove it. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, I will FaceTime Wait, you get a her. Wife? What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. See, I, I, it's I, because he can afford three hundred dollars for a studio. Yeah. yeah. 
Can you? <laughs> oh, there we go. There we go. I just so, like I, I go through to abandon duplexes like a hermit crab. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> do a bigger one. Yeah. Again again? yeah. Oh, goody. Died. So it's it's one studio space. Like I don't have like a sink or anything. it's just a studio art space, and All I've way, converted pause, it to Joe, a. I, to I, a I just really space. hung up on this idea okay. of Heaton being. The fanciest squatter. <laughs> like, okay. The idea okay. that you I, can I, I, that, I, I, that, that you you can roll up to any house or apartment, and if you come in in a horse-drawn carriage <laughs> wearing a top hat, and you're like, I live here now. They're like, I guess he does. No, right. no, no. Like, he how needs, do we kick him you out? You need a fancy, like, like embossed like, like, business should, card. Should yeah. you like to eject me, you can please look it up with my barrister and <laughs> hand yeah. like an embossed card. Yeah. yeah. What, what, like each time I get a windfall is like you, you can pay off some of your debt and I'm like oh I'm gonna scar <laughs> <laughs> no really you do okay no no I need Fa- some fats fancy s- fancy squatter I can see that on I a business card I feel like card. this is probably the premise for absolutely fabulous and yeah. I just didn't Get watch enough of it scale bindle yeah, 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 yeah. Velvet Bindle. Oh, yeah. Velvet Bindle. Vel- Velvet Bindle will also be my drag name. Yes. <laughs> God, Velvet Bindle. What kind of music would they play? Velvet Bindle. Um, oh, Velvet Bindle would be bluegrass covers of classic rock. Yeah. Oh, no. Or yeah. prog rock, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Like, 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 like Velvet band Underground that... and right. shit yeah. like yep. that, yeah. There's a bluegrass band that only covers Linkin Park songs. Nice. Oh, there's a bluegrass band. Bluegrass is secretly the punk of <laughs> yeah. country yes. music. Yes. Like, like they love covers, or yeah. like, or, or ska bands. Like, like they fucking. There's not. Yeah, a song I, that I love Iron cover. Horse. Iron Horse uh, has an album called. Um, it's not. It's not Rage Against the Machine. It's like. Uh, like day. fiddle against the machine or something like that. Oh uh, yeah. They took like like nine inch nails. They then they did a, a bluegrass cover of that. They did the shins, which is really good. Yeah. I'm, yeah. No, bluegrass nice. fucking rules. Velvet Mendel. Mostly because uh, all bluegrass songs are mostly about depression, suicide, and trains. <laughs> uh, and I'm like, this is like... Well, like, like and sometimes uh, your animals being molested by other animals. Exactly, like, yeah. Like chickens got raided by a fox. But it's like, normally, it's like when I first got into bluegrass, I'm like, oh shit, like, I listen to alternative music. And I like trains. <laughs> like, this shit is the best. Do we have a music genre yeah. for you? I'm like, I'm like, fuck it. Look, I can handle a couple mandolins if this is all y'all sing about. Like, this is my shit. Uh, uh, so, so this is something that Justin and I were talking about in the car. And somebody who I think that both of you guys should have on your podcast. Uh, I, I started watching the Kenny G documentary by Penny Lane. Uh, uh, are, are you familiar with Penny Lane's work? Uh, uh, she's a documentary filmmaker. Uh, she uh, uh, did uh, the movie Hail Satan? Question uh, mark About uh, uh, there's apparently two flavors of Satanists. Yes. There are secularists and atheists who are trying to prove a point. Yes. And then there are those who are like, yeah, all the supernatural shit is real. And there's one guy who said you should not know the difference between good and evil. And then there was this bro who hooked us up with knowledge of good and evil. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, uh, she's a Fascinating filmmaker. I, I I really think both of you guys should should reach out and interview them. I now want to learn about these. Are, are the are the the atheist activists? Do they get along with the? Mm, oh, no. are you a member of the what church? Think? Oh, yeah, okay. so, Satanic Temple. Yeah. Uh, so so right. yeah no that that that, yeah. that, that yeah. Church that, of Satan is Anton Lavey. Yeah. 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 Satanic Temple. It's. That's what it is. Yeah. It's a. Yeah. It's. It's deep level punking on some levels, so, so but they've this, also this done like some a really great. Richard Dawkins trolling. Well, somebody. well, the big Damn. thing that the main reason I'm a member is because they do a lot with uh, yeah, with women's. This is great. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. They have a masseuse. It's no, right it, next door. No, no shit. Actually, kind of yes. They're doing a lot for women's rights and abortion laws. Yeah. Uh, they're actually currently trying to get satanic abortions covered under uh, religious, Reli- yeah, yeah, Re- religious, religious freedoms, yeah. so that they can give abortion, so a woman can get a safe abortion in Texas and not get oh, with a get religious yeah, 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 yes, not, yep. But but they yep. but they they beyond because you know, it would they, be they, a they, satanic they're very abortion. Politically active, and yeah. uh, uh, their biggest win. Was they? I believe it was in Arizona. There were uh, uh, religious things put up in, I believe, either a city hall yeah. or yeah, ten, yeah, they, ten they, were, they were good about that in Oklahoma. Uh, Oklahoma had a uh, Ten Commandments monument they, put up, and like I don't, I don't really care about old Ten Commandments monuments. From like, I think yeah. it's stupid for the record because 
our jurisprudence not is not based on the, the Ten Commandments. It's based off of English common law. It, it's right. it nothing. But I get it. It's 1890. You're pioneers. Moses is a lawgiver. I get. It doesn't bug me if it's an old one, like, like in the same way that like in God We Trust doesn't bug me. Yeah. But this one came up after Taylor Swift was born. It was yeah. made in like the year yeah. 2008 yeah. or something yeah. like that, which means it's really just a big middle finger to atheists and secular. Well, so and that, that yeah. that's what and that's, the Satanic Temple yeah. has and, been and, very and good. What, what they did is about was, building their uh, own. They put that, the statue that said, of Baphomet. I'm not. Yeah. Except that's what they yeah, want to do. They, they want, want to have, no, no, sit in the lap of Baphomet. Yeah. It was, yeah. It was a statue designed for children to sit in. And then yep. the local Hindu temple went, well, we want to put in Vishnu. Yeah. And then, like, yeah. all the other, like, I was yep. like, well, this is actually pretty fucking cool now. Yeah. yeah. I would yeah. actually like the, the sculpture garden of gods. Control room to Baphomet. Control room to Baphomet. Yes. 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 Five minutes. What is it? Yeah. Five minutes. Uh, five are, minutes. Are, we, are, we, are we wrapping up? Yeah, five minutes. You got uh, it. Yeah. Thank you, five. Yeah. I, can I plug my new podcast before we go? I mean, new you can podcast. do whatever the fuck you want, dog. Thanks. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Well, you want to fight? <laughs> All right, you you fight, and I will plug your podcast. <laughs> yeah, thank you uh, if much. I only remember the right. title, Fist have, you, have, you, have, you ever, have you ever played one sock, one sock wrestling? It's pretty good. So what you do is you you, you take your shoes off. Yeah. You take one sock off. You know, we we both have one sock on now. Are you yeah. following me? Okay. We each have one sock on. Yep. Yeah. Okay. You got to remove the other guy's sock. Them's the rules. Right. That's the whole. Okay. Oh God! All right, hold on, hold on. Okay. Before, before you do it, what, what's the name of the podcast? <laughs> losers, pretenders, and scoundrels. I think I know the rest of it, okay. but all right. So, losers, pretenders, and scoundrels is a new podcast with Andrew Heaton and his friend Andrew Young. Uh, uh, they uh, are both going to be on an episode of uh, the Political Orphanage with me uh, this tomorrow. week tomorrow. Uh, 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 and it should we each episode move the table? goes through a, 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 a one of these near to wells and they explain whether or not they are properly judged by history or if maybe things have been lost in the sauce. Uh, 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 there is no doubt, uh, uh, having been on a show with both of them, this is going to be very much worth your time. Oh, what we want oh, is for, I think no, you got No, think, no, no. Control, you got to keep your pants on. You do have to keep the pants on. Why? Yeah. Why? <laughs> okay. What? So now, wait, what, hold on. What is my, what is my is that, life? It's a funny history podcast. If you like history, you think I'm funny, you'll love it. It's called Losers, Pretenders, and Scoundrels. I got to get this. All right, here we go. Losers, Pretenders, and Scoundrels. Losers, Pretenders, and Scoundrels. <laughs> and now oh, for audio listeners. Listeners, the one sock wrestling is on. Oh, God. oh wait, hold oh. on. Oh, All right, Heaton's going right for the sock. Oh, God. He's going right for the sock. Oh, God. He's going right for the sock. Oh, God. 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 Oh, God
one person, a few people, some people were, and the, the people in this podcast were not talking about it yet. And uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to show you. So uh, one of the things that they did during the Saudi Arabia Grand Prix was take this commemorative photo with uh, Jean Pot, okay. I believe, who is the, uh, he is the current president of the FIA, the, uh, the regulating body. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, he, this was his last uh, race as the president. So they're going to have a new president sometime. I don't know. Um, and so they had all the line, the, all the drivers line up on on the track, and uh, you know everyone's kind of standing up and awkward. Yes, uh, everybody look awkward for the photo. It looks like <laughs> a for for radio listeners, yeah. uh, audio listeners. It looks exactly like any corporate photo you've taken. Yeah, where you, they line up everybody, and it takes like three hours for everybody to get still. Got to get up. still, and you got to stand and straight, and you look right. Looks awkward. In fact, uh, one Fernando Alonso decided. <laughs> He would still, I don't know, they, this was maybe the best photo that they could take, but he's off looking to his left with with, with a mask, mask on. on. <laughs> See, exactly. <laughs> this is every corporate photo ever. But uh, one of the things that I'd like to show you about this is, hey, you may you may already know that because you have more of an F1 history than okay. I do. I'm, I'm still kind of green. Yep. So these, these guys are, are in good shape, right? You know, they train a lot. They got to work out. You're going through a lot of G-forces. Um, and it's kind of a thing that they all have i don't know if you've noticed this they all have huge necks yes they have oh they have fucking redwood necks yes um you, you, we got george hope, russell here who's like I got hope. a long like the, the having a big thick neck muscle is kind of it, it, it's it's not the worst thing to do yes. like you can kind of wear it well i hope i know where this is going but keep going um and so I, I'm, I'm i'm going to uh uh uh, scroll further into the photo here under the right okay. because look at look at Lance Stroll's neck, dog. Okay, wait, you've got to do a search. <laughs> do do a YouTube search right now okay. for uh, Fernando Alonso. The, no, the walnut. Yes, the walnut. Oh my god, absolutely. You so you do know about it. I do know about it, but we we can, we have to show it to people because yes. it's it's so good. So uh, um, so uh, wait, pause it right quick. So f Formula One drivers, uh, because they're going around the track so fast and stopping and turning, right. their G-forces on their necks are extremely strong. Very high. So up to uh, three to five uh, Gs on their necks. So that means your head weighs three to five times what it normally does. Sure. And, you know, you're, you're, you're like the rest of your body is in the capsule, yep. but your neck and your head are kind of free floating. Yep. And with the helmet. Helmet, So yeah. things get... It's very heavy, and so they have to do extreme neck training uh, so their head doesn't pop off during the race. Right, um, because that would be uh, bad. Yes, Wait, and, and uh, they talk about it being very, their necks being very sore for the first handful of races through the season. Yeah. In fact, this is um, this is kind of an infamous clip of Fernando Alonso, who is a world champion. Yep. Uh, two time. Oh, no, no, no. Two time. Uh, at, I, I don't know if this was a press event or something, but... Uh, 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 the, the, if someone goes up to him, I don't know if this is like a TV crew or something, and says, like, hey, here's a walnut. Can you do the thing? Oh, goodness. Oh, he does it. So he put the walnut on his shoulder in between his, like, his neck and his shoulder. And he moves his head over and crushes the walnut and opens the walnut with nothing but his neck and his shoulder. It's... <laughs> it's so a walnut. It's it's great. It's it's like it's a great clip and like everybody gets into it. Yeah. But I just all of the you know like it's it's, it's like the the neck thing is kind of like the manual breathing meme yeah. where it's like once you, once you've heard about it that's all you can see. Yeah. You know, in this photo all of the drivers look just about normal until you look at like the actual efficiency here in the middle and yeah. they've got like you know normal <laughs> necks little, little where everyone else is just, it's it's a uh, I don't know. I I I just thought it was I thought that was a very funny yeah cuz like thing. most of these formula 1 drivers are like very skinny, you know? Like yeah. very lean because it it helps on the weight distribution of the car if they don't weigh very much, so they're all very lean. Uh mm -hmm. and so they all look like I said, very lean like runners uh, or bicyclists, right. except their necks all look like linebackers. Right. And like some of them like Danny Danny fe Danny always feels Danny Ricardo always feels like a big guy. I think cuz his neck, I don't know, he wears his neck kind of out. Yeah. I don't know. It's I, it's there. I don't know. In thinking about doing this bit today, I was like, "There's we can't talk about anything real." No, uh, for, There's for th anybody actually interested in a race, it was wild. It was uh, wild, and you should go watch it or like watch the race in thirty of it or something. Yeah, because I mean, we can describe it to you, but watching it is so important. And 
And the big thing now is like everyone's got their own opinions of what went down, what was right, what wasn't right. I know we talked we talked the other day, and some of my opinions have changed a little bit. But I, I think like it's uh, it, it, there <laughs> there won't be anything coming out of us no. just d- deciding. Oh well, actually, it should be ten seconds. I do like this question. Yeah. Uh, from ooh, I, I don't know how to say that. Wanyam. Wanyam. Yes. Yeah. Uh, how does one wear one's neck out? And so is that like short shorts? Like, you know what I mean? You, you can wear your thighs out, you know? So you do oh, wear like a... Yes, a, I, that's, is, is that's what a, I meant. Is there a reverse turtleneck? Yeah, I meant he was like wearing it out like out on the town. Yeah. You know, he, he it, it looks good on him. He's kind of a tall guy. He's he's very smiley. So, so more of a V-neck and less of a collared shirt. Is that what you're saying? It, yeah, yes. All right. I, I think so. All right. I think that's what I mean. Um, also, uh, very funny in this photo, Charlotte Claire is the only one wearing a jumpsuit. Uh, oh yeah, so it's not he hasn't even changed yet. No, <laughs> or maybe he's he's ready to go racing. Uh, may, uh, you know what? I, I believe I that he's always ready to go racing. I bet. I bet those Ferrari guys. If I if I was on the Ferrari team, I like I I would I would wear it everywhere. <laughs> I I would wear the hat. I'd have pins. I'd have a fucking like. Give me you know those um you know those old paintings of like um. Uh, royal old ancient time like kings and queens and they've got yeah. the big neck ruffles. Yeah. I would do that in like the Ferrari red and yellow. Yeah. Just I mean how come on. Not. Yeah. How could you not? Um I uh uh I've I've been going back and starting I restarted season one of Drive to Survive. Okay, wow, yeah. Because now that I know the sport a little more and some of the people, uh it does a lot of not as much of it just like washes away. Yeah, a lot I mean, of it makes more sense, and you get to see some of these kids as kids. Yeah, I mean, like uh, you know, they start in 2018 when Max first Abbott is yeah. new, right? Danny's kind of the he old was, hand at and Red Bull. Wild. Oh yeah, very aggressive. I mean, and that that's the big threat of them running into each other constantly. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, and he would end up for it. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, <laughs> he was there. He was there for wrecking anybody this first year. He was he was happy. To, yeah. To, uh, it's it's uh, I don't know. It's a good show. I I'm I'm still a, I'm still into it. Some some people are not into it mm-hmm. because there is it is there is an element of it that is more reality show yeah. than documentary. Um, yeah. but I'm a messy. Yeah. So if, you, if you're new to <laughs> if you're <laughs> like new to uh, Formula One, you might think that this is a new phenomenon of uh, uh, Hamilton and Verstappen running into each other. But no, this this story is <laughs> happens a lot. It happens to Max a lot. Yes, it does. Um, uh. But that race was good. I, I think the race was good. I'm excited. I hope. I uh, I I also saw that they're going back in March, like they're going back there relatively really? soon. Wow. Wow. I think yeah. because they won't have a triple header in the Middle East with Qatar yeah. being off yeah, next yeah. week or next year. Yeah, and so they want to do it while it's still cool, cool. cooler. In the... in... All right, somebody we've got our like special guest. Die at the F1. Everybody was talking about like somebody died. Frank Williams, who is a legendary team leader, yeah. passed away. But he. He, but he was a racer. He nothing. was not a racer. Oh. He he's been out of the game. He was a tetraplegic, and yeah. so he was. But there, but there was like a big accident or some shit at F one. There were a well, there are a lot of crashes this weekend. Absolutely, it's a no. very fast circuit. No injuries. This is but by no. far the worst well, shit Formula that's ever two. happened in Saudi Arabia. A Formula two? No, they did. One of the oh yeah. One yeah, of the sure. one of the racers in Formula two. If you guys didn't miss it, F one just put out the highlights because they weren't sure if the guy was going to make it because yeah. he was in the ICU. But. uh uh, he his car for whatever reason stalls on the grid can't move someone just smashes right into him everyone else moves around but so, much, uh, so like immediately they get a red flag uh, I guess in, in F2 those races are like 25 minutes or something and they did like 10 minutes total so it's like a real no. real tiny amount so um, uh, cool well thank you Corey uh, thank you everybody for joining us here on Critical Racing Theory, a mini podcast within the pre-show podcast of Great Night. Alrighty, everybody. It is uh, just a few minutes to seven. I want to give you uh, a, a couple things to check out before we get going. Um, uh, please make sure you check us out on Patreon, patreon.com slash great night. You can uh, get all of the stuff in one feed, plus all of the uh, bonus episodes directly into your face. All that good stuff. Um, uh, follow us on Twitter at great night pod, great Oh no! Great night at Great Night Live on Twitter. Man, I need to re- consolidate these. Good God! Great. We'll figure it out. Uh, great night live on. Uh, doesn't matter. But look at the show notes. It's actually in the show notes, so n- never mind. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Brian Stop. got some wrestling in. Sure Max <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Um, let's do some thumbs up. Corey, you good? Yeah. On Lisa? I'm good. Brian? Go. Justin? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Brett? Hello, friend. Hello, friend. Oh, have you got a, you've got a punishment and stuff ready? I will have one. Okay, okay. <laughs> I just realized that we didn't have you in the meeting, so we couldn't ask. Yes. But, uh, we'll, uh, we'll make sure we get that. Yes. Uh, very cool. Our guests are, are, in, are in standby. We've got Skype opened up. All right. Uh, you ready to do this thing, Brett? Yes. All right. 